And this is where it comes to. So they're actually going to start on a little bit of a camber. Just three lanes have been laid out. And the big story is the progress, incredible progress, of Francine Nian Saba, one of the DSD athletes who wasn't able to compete over the last couple of years in her normal event, the 800 metres. And then the choice was either to move up or uh, take the medication required to keep testosterone levels within the... Uh, per the permitted levels that World Athletics had set, but Nian Saba chose to have a go at the longer distances and has been with uh, fantastic results, particularly over this uh, last three or four weeks when she's been unbeaten, 3,000 metres. And now uh, we think here we'll probably start as maybe the slight favourite over Helen O'Beary in the 5,000, which is saying something. But a pretty good field lined up. Such an unusual race. I think that will certainly determine how the races run in the sense that a they've got to get used to the tight turns there are a couple of almost 90 degree turns with heavy banking and then this slightly more sweeping turn at the bottom bend long lap not used to the normal 400 meters where you can give yourself you know gauging your pace everything else uh, it's, it's gone out the window all of the normal benchmarks that you have so it's not a road race and it's not a normal track race something in between if you like so the 5,000 metres, Diamond League final. Others to watch out for here, Rengaruk and Werku. Uh, Rengaruk of uh, Kenya, Werku of Ethiopia. But especially Taye of Ethiopia, I think, will give the uh, two big names a run for their money. Pace is going to be set by Van Buskirk of Canada. And she'll have the job of trying to just get them going at around 70, 71 second laps for what would be a 400 metres. And I'm not even going to begin to try and work out what that is around here, but it's, uh, I think uh, they should be lapping in around one, uh, 120, something like, excuse me, 220. Is that right, Tim? Can't be right, no. 563 metres. Yes. Um, no, I'll tell you what. No, it'll be a lot more that. than 120 for 563 exactly metres. That would right. be if they're doing 60 second pace. I'm, I'm going to ignore that. Anyway, there's the first turn. You and I have had a walk around this, as you, as you said. Those turns are very, very tight. They are banked, and there's a little bit of drop as you come off each of the banked turns as well. So a lot for them to think about here, and I'm, I'm sure these first couple of laps, they'll just get themselves settled in and get used to the track. Basically, Steve, 563 metres into 5,000 goes 8.88 times. So this is the 0.88 of a lap, and when they come through the finish line in front of us, they'll have eight laps to run. The pace looks fairly steady at the moment, not particularly demanding. She's been asked to go out at about 2.57 pace for the first kilometre, Kate Van Buskirk, and she will do that, I'm sure. She's a very experienced pacemaker. By the way, it's a sweltering hot afternoon here in Zurich. It's quite glorious late Indian summer we're having. I suppose it's about 28 degrees here. There's a very slight breeze across the lake, but those dark glasses are very much justified for Kate Buskirk out in the lead. Steve, I'll be fascinated. You mentioned Nian Saber and how she's been more or less unbeatable since the games. I saw her run in Paris, what, 10, 12 days ago in the 8 19, 3000, uh, the fifth fastest in history. I mean, she has got it all. She's got enormous strength and she's got that blistering pace over the last 100, which nobody's found an answer to. No, I, th I think her story, uh, e even this summer, uh, is such an interesting one in terms of what happened in Tokyo. We're just going to break off on there from this 5,000 because... Taking the lead back from Krauser. Well, uh, Van Buskirk, I feel a little bit sorry for her because she's a little confused here. The, the one kilometre time came up as four, as what, sorry, excuse me, 2.49, which is actually very fast for 5,000 metres, almost world record pace. Uh, but I think it was in the wrong place, because when she got to the finish line, she was on schedule for what was set as what we think would be the 70-71 pace. And I think she's got a... Then she sort of uh, wasn't sure, and she's dropped out now a little bit earlier than we were expecting. So that means that uh, Kip Kemboy's going to lead this, but they're still on around about 14.40 pace, not 14.10 as that first kilometre split would have suggested. It, I think it was in the wrong place. So just come back to Nian Saba, um, and you're right, Tim, you know, what an incredible story. Then you know, she ran the 10,000 in the Olympic Games and, and ran OK, and that was a bit of a surprise. It was fifth, and that was competitive. And then everyone started talking about her chances in the five. And then she got disqualified for literally putting one foot on the inside in the heats of the 5,000 metres. And I think, I think she would have been a factor in the 5,000 metre final, or certainly had a good chance of being a factor, because, as you've said, what we've seen since then reiterates how, how good she's become.
in such a short space of time. But she puts it down the fact she moved to Kenya last year, uh, sorry, in 2019, once she knew that 800 meter career was up for the um, uh, foreseeable future. And she's just been training. She says, every morning I get up and see Kipchoge. What more inspiration do you need than that? And uh, so, yes, brilliant performances from her. But this has slowed right down now again and uh, becoming a little bit more cat and mouse after Van Brusco dropped out. Well, Steve, I think that two kilometre time of 5.46.08 is uh, perhaps more realistic. But I definitely agree with you. I don't think that first kilometre was 14.10 pace, almost world record pace. I thought they were running fairly, uh, fairly slowly, fairly conservatively, actually. Yeah, Tim, the, we were given a chart which said at this point when they went through with five to go, uh, 6.26 was 71 second pace, and that's exactly what they went through in. Which, so as I said, we're in the 14.40, 14.45 range. They will speed up at the end, no doubt about that. We might just have to take the kilometre splits with a, with a little bit of a pinch of salt. So Helen O'Beary will be running the Great North Run next uh, Sunday, just a few days' time. It's coming Sunday. Coming Sunday, yes. So uh, she said uh, in a press conference yesterday, yeah, I'm onto the roads now. I don't know if she's running any other races after the Great North Run. And the Insaba feeling this slow pace, but that bend is not a place to overtake. <laughs> Uh, you're going to get pushed so wide around there. But yeah, so Abiri just said I was happy with my silver medal. Obviously, Hassan uh, won the 5,000, and Obiri knows it. Now, Nian Saba is a great contender. Maybe only Hassan would have the pace you were talking about, Tim, to perhaps outkick Nian Saba over this sort of distance. Well, you're right, Steve. I mean, you know, Nian Saba, the Olympic silver medalist in Rio, has run 155 for 800. Uh, Hassan has run 156, and obviously for about 48 hours earlier on this summer, back in June, had the world record for 10,000. So she has a, a similar sort of range. In fact, in fact, if not intrinsically, probably slightly better than Nian Saba does uh, Sifon Hassan. But Nian Saba was very much a dialed-in 800-metre runner, not even really a 1,500-metre runner in her former guise. And she's come out this side of the pandemic if we are at the other not be valid for track record purposes which is a kind of ironic when you look at the size of it yes uh, great expense and a lot of thought gone into this but it's, it's something different and it's pretty spectacular you have to say that and the crowd in front of us are certainly enjoying it obiri now there's just dropped a little bit the pace still nothing fast really fast uh, for these women normally but it's hot out there it's a uh, completely different type of atmosphere for them as they run around the top end around the building that's a tight 90 degree turn with a high banking i have to say educate Ote, who had only run 1453 before the beginning of 2021 and she behind the ensemble broke her the ethiopian national record 819 which says something if you're breaking ethiopian national records at 3,000 meters so uh, that's something which has stood her really good stead in the second half of this season because despite uh, her brilliant performance in the Ethiopian trials when she ran 14-14 didn't quite live up to that at the Olympics. Finished fifth, that's no, you know, it's a brilliant field. Finished fifth, but I think that performance in Paris just showed her potential. So she now takes it on. Taye, the 21-year-old Ethiopian, as they come round now with just two laps to go, but that's well over a 1,000 metres. So more than two and a half laps of a normal track. And it hasn't really started to get moving here. Kip Kemboy on her shoulder. Obiri just tucked in. Nian Saba on her outside. Well, these are five beginning to get away. And Ty just had a little glance over her left shoulder there to see what sort of damage this little surge has done. But Kip Kemboy, Steve, looks quite comfortable on her shoulder. And Nian Saba there in the orange just loping along towards the back of the group. We know she's got several gears to go through yet. Obiri on the inside. Holding that uh, inside line and the sh running the shortest line, if you like, around these various bends. Has such an unusual style, O'Beary, really flopping with the arm. She has a long, languid stride for not a particularly tall athlete, but covers the ground so well. She is, uh, prior to Neon Saba of recent weeks, the big kicker, really. I was just going to ask you this question. Where would you do your kick on this? Because round about there, we, we think as they come around this very... That, that previous turn is about 300 to go, we think. And then as they come around another 90-degree turn, maybe about one... Maybe, almost approaching 200 metres. Maybe about 180, straight. 190 from here. So do you wait to here? There's one slight bend again to the finish. So they're on their penultimate lap here. Where do you do your big kick here? 
Well, it's a very good question, Steve. When you've run road miles where it's almost an optical illusion when you run dead straight, you can see yes. the finish and you think, right, I'm going to start sprinting now, and it never gets any closer, and you no. misjudge it completely. It's an optical illusion. Well, they're on the home straight now for the penultimate time, but you're right. I reckon it's 180 metres long, something like that, maybe 190 metres long, so it'd be very tempting to go too early. I would leave it until after that final bend. Nien Saba wants to just try and control this, so at the bell, 563 metres exactly to go. Nien Saba leading. Then they'll go around this tight turn into the long back straight, and then the two 90-degree turns, the cameras are out, the phones are out. And now Nien Saba just stretching them, hasn't really started kicking here. Or Beery just looks as though she's struggling, but now moves out, wants to go past Kip Kembo and Tyre. Tyre still looks really comfortable. She doesn't have a, as good a kick as some of the others, but it's going to be who goes first here, I think. Well, as a... An element of patience here and tactics are employed, of course, always in middle distance and 5,000 metre running, but how do you apply tactics on a, such an unusual circuit? Here they take this corner, now they do, what, about 80 metres, and then they take another sharp turn and they're into the home straight, that 200 metre sprint, nearly 200 metre sprint, sprint Steve. Obiri looks like she's going early, but is Neon Sabi going to control it? Yeah, holding her off, Obiri's uh, made it difficult for herself, having to go wide on the bends here, trying to use the camber to give her a bit of a lift off that bend, and Obiri now stretching out Neon Saba, but Neon Saba responds as they come round one slight bend here, and then there'll be about 100 metres to go, the crowd are on their feet here, cheering them in, it's Neon Saba and Obiri, it's going to be very, very tight here, Neon Saba just has the advantage, so starts to move away, increases her lead, it's Neon Saba with the strength and the speed to come away from Helen Obiri, it'll be another wonderful victory for Neon Saba, 14.28.98, they really picked up over the last kilometre, fast last kilometre, as expected, Helen O'Beary having to settle for second again. Uh, Nian Saba building her reputation in the distance events now. Shows that she's capable at 3,000, 5,000 and indeed 10,000. And she even began the season, I think, running cross country as well. But that 14, 28, 98 clocking, not a personal best because she set that in uh, Brussels uh, just over a week or so ago. But good, good smart running she controlled it tim didn't she she got to the front and i think that's smart on those wide bends what you don't want to be doing is trying to attack wide in those last two bends which helen obiri tried to do well neil saba has got the strength and the stamina to control races and dominate them frankly and very very few people in the world maybe see how stefan has son i'm not sure anybody else maybe gide could uh, hold off Obiri in a, what, about 150, 160 metre home straight like that. But somewhat bizarrely, the finish line is about 30 metres before the big arch at the end of the home straight. So it's uh, one of those deceptive finish lines, a bit like the Stockholm uh, track, the old Olympic Stadium in the Swedish capital. But Nian Saba there has got the ability, Steve, just to buy in her time and then kick. And the last kilometre, 2.44... That probably doesn't uh, contain all the information we need, which is to say that, really, the finishing speed over the last couple of hundred by this pair was quite fantastic. Drew them clear. Taye was able to stay close to them, but uh, Kip Kimboy a little way back. Nian Tarber has really got it dialed in, hasn't she? This ability to kick and hold off the big names. I, I, I really wonder now what, what will happen. I mean, we're not here tonight to have a whole discussion around DSD, but just for people to understand that uh, the events that were chosen were based on the evidence that was available, based on the athletes who were running at the time in those events. And obviously, Nian Saba has moved up into the longer distances. And whether or not there will also be, uh, and hopefully uh, from her point of view, she won't want that to be the case, but every time she runs and competes again at the longer distances, it provides the evidence, perhaps, that was the same situation we had in the 800 and the 1500 metres. Um, so that's one to watch. And <laughs> there she's the Diamond League champion for the 2021 season. A season that's been difficult for all athletes for all sorts of reasons and to organisers as well. But this one here, we're finishing with something special, something different. And we've certainly seen that the Saba has produced a season for her to remember. Disappointment at the Olympic Games, that disqualification, I'm sure. But these last three, four weeks have given her a lot to celebrate and a lot to ponder as well as she goes into next year. Well, there's a three-pronged benefit to winning. You get that glorious Diamond League trophy, and those are precious, believe me.
She gets $30,000 as the winner in the final, and she gets a wild card entry to the World Championships next year in Eugene, Oregon.